Right, good evening everyone. everyone. Thank you very much for coming along to this evening's meeting of the Finance and Performance Management Cabinet Committee. We have, um, first of all, we've got the webcasting notice. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. If you are seated in the lower public seating area, it is likely that the recording cameras will capture your image and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery. Please could I also remind members to put on their microphones before speaking. Thank you. So that's the webcasting notice done. And now we go on to the main agenda. Item two, apologies for absence. Or an chair. Thank you. So there are no substitute members. Any de declarations of interest? None? None? Thank you. So we go on to the minutes. Um, this is to confirm the accuracy of the minutes of the last meeting of the committee held on the 18th of <coughs> July 2019. Can I sign them as a true and accurate record, please? Thank you. So the first main item of the agenda is the... Um, the risk management, the corporate risk <coughs> register, which is page seven on your agenda. Turn over, hand over to Jim. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, this is an update report, and it's a, a usual thing that comes to this committee. The committee have been supplied with a copy of our updated corporate risk register, um, and it's it, it's. In, in essence, very similar to the one that you've seen before. I don't propose to go through it in great detail. I will um, draw your attention to um, one extra risk which we've included. It, it, it's, it's basically um, a risk which has been identified that was part of another, and we felt that <clears throat> it was better to separate out two risks um, so that we could uh, address each of them, each of them properly. Um, risk number six has um, uh, has been split, and there's an extra risk number 13, which deals specifically with cyber security in terms of um, the data and information that we we hold. So, in essence, risk number six um, remains as a, a risk to uh, data loss or uh, via. Um, actions or inactions of, of the council itself so <clears throat> in terms of something like the GDPR where we have uh, perhaps mistakenly give out information about somebody's personal circumstances that risk addresses that whereas risk number 13 deals with the cyber security side of things specifically um, so that would deal with uh, things like hacking or carelessness of digital data um, you know the, the old leaving the laptop on the uh, on the train scenario. Uh, we feel, felt that by splitting those risks, we could address them more effectively. The recommendations are for you to, to note that and to uh, also consider whether there are any other uh, risks which members may have identified that they would wish uh, officers to consider for inclusion in the uh, risk register. And then finally, to agree the updated register and recommend it to Cabinet for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you, John. Thank you. Yes, uh, on the cyber security, I'm glad to see that called out, but I think there are enhancements that we should probably be looking at that. I mean, the, the issue is uh, corruption of data as well as, as system loss. Um, and I think I'd like to see more in terms of, in terms of the controls. We should be tracking potential cybersecurity events and probably reporting against them because either we see none, in which case we're missing ones because we're not, not getting any. And that helps to give us reassurance that our controls in place are effective. And I, th I, I like the idea of staff training, but I'd like a bit of a stronger metric on that. I know certainly from my point of view, in my, <coughs> where, where I work, 
Uh, I do cybersecurity training mandatory online every year, and each member of the 450,000 or so worldwide employees have to do that, and that, that gets tracked. I think if, if we put that into this risk register in terms of something that we should be doing, that, that's going to give us more confidence that people are actually remembering what it is, and if we track then any potential attacks, if we don't see any, we're missing them. If we see some, then that's fine. If we're seeing a lot, then we may have another problem. Happy to let that chairman feed that back in. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Yes, Sam. Just a couple of other points on that risk number 13, cyber security. Uh, I wonder, do we currently um, employ uh, outside consultants to conduct penetration tests to make sure that our firewalls are doing what they're supposed to do? Uh, it's often uh, a valuable exercise. Uh, the other thing I would ask is, um, with regard to backups, it's mentioned we've got three backups stored off-site. Do we go through perhaps annually a restoration process to make sure that the the recovery process is in place? Yeah. Sorry, Chairman, I'm not aware um, that we uh, do that, um, but I can certainly find out and get back to you separately. Leader. Thank you, Chairman. Ch Chairman. Chairman, moving back to risk number one, the local plan, very mindful of the situation with the development and mitigation strategy around the, the SAC issue, mm. which was brought up at full council, it was brought up at audit and governance, and I've had three phone calls today from people about it, and the actual pressure it's now putting on a lot of small developers, in, in, you know, capable of actually wrecking businesses, and I just wonder if we should separate that out as an individual risk, a very high risk, as a reputational damage to this council caused by, by um, obviously, beyond our control, but it is causing reputational damage to the council. Um, as we're getting the blame for what's beyond, beyond what we can actually do at the moment. I just think we need to se separate it out and make more of an issue of it um, because it is an ongoing problem and it's a problem we have to address. Yes, as you say, it is incorporated in the um, risk number one, but maybe... Tim, I, I tend to agree with the leader on this one. I think it's actually wider than the local plan because even if we weren't at this stage in the local plan, we would be having this issue with natural England. Um, there is definitely potential for, rep well, there is already reputational damage. Uh, I shall look forward with great interest to seeing um, exactly what the uh, existing controls and mitigation of it are likely to be because it's one of these ones that currently is somewhat intractable. But I think from our point of view, we should call it out explicitly. So um, you're in so, agreement to actually so bringing this out and, yeah, as a separate uh, risk. Standalone risk. Yeah. I, I, I think there's a number of things that we can tie in there. It's, it's, it's the inability of this council to issue any planning permissions, which gives us, a, as well as the reputational risk that the leader was talking about, it's the impact that this will have on our ability to fulfil the housing delivery test. If we're not granting any permissions, we can't be having houses built. So I, I think it's one we should... Be, we should we should call out, hopefully, um, by the next iteration or the one after that of this risk re register, it may be a risk that we can then take off again. Members in agreement with that? Chairman, I'll, I'll take that back into the risk management group and we'll, we'll update the register accordingly. Lovely. Good. Thank you. So, with those comments and amendments, going back to page 7, do you note, agree, and consider the recommendations listed therein? <laughs> well, well, there's, yes, there's one note. All right, two recommendations, number two. Yes, thank you. So, okay, so back to the uh, main agenda. So now that brings us on to any other business. Yes, that's eight. No, it's not, it's been changed, is it? It's down there, it's got any other business and eight finance update. Yes, so oh. Cindy, should I please ask for entry? Sorry, yeah. Okay, so um, certainly. So we've got on, where are we?
Right, OK. So we want the permission of the chairman to be obtained after prior notice of the chief executive before urgent business not specified in the agenda, including the supplementary agenda, um, of which the statutory period of notice has been given may be transacted. OK. Sorry? It's usually supplementary, supplementary item, Chairman. That's the supplementary item. OK. Can we go on to that now? Yes. Thank you. All right. So it's on the supplementary agenda before you. And who's introducing that? I think. Chair, I'll just bring your attention to the headlines, uh, some of which have been covered by other meetings before. Um, the 2018-19 financial position and accounts, uh, we've made progress obviously since the last meetings. We're down to a very few issues and therefore a wind-up meeting with the external auditors we're trying to seek for next week or the week beyond that. Uh, you'll be glad to hear that to date the, their suggestions still remain uh, minor changes to our accounts, which would happen in, in um, anywhere else. Um, no major issues have been discovered. Uh, the only issue, again, I wish to draw your attention to is, uh, alongside other uh, local authorities, we have to adjust our balance sheet for the McLeod judgment that affects uh, pension liabilities, but that's entirely within the balance sheet in terms of recognising that potential liability and offsetting it with uh, an entry in the uh, pension reserve. If we move on to the uh, financial position as we are now, um, we are just uh, finishing off the formal month five August position uh, with services. Um, the summary of that is that we have found uh, that performance has been adequate, that there are neither significant underspends or overspends, either in relation to income expenditure or recharges. Um, looking forward to month six and beyond, uh, we obviously have to deliver the balance of the savings program, which, as you recall, uh, you set at £1.5 million. 648,000 we've identified to date. The remainder we should identify uh, and implement by the end of October. And the other big financial issue is obviously the effective management of the uh, staff consultation exercise, which again is in hand. And obviously, the numbers involved in that are relatively large, but good approach to vacancy management, um, assimilation, will mean that that risk is mitigated very quickly. The other issues, I, I will answer any questions on there about progress with budget and other particular things, if that is all right. Thank you. <coughs> Members? I think that goes without saying, and uh, there's just a lot of savings to be found in the next part of the year. Thank you. Any other comments? Right. That being so, um, there's no exclusion of public and press. So that brings us to the end of the meeting. Thank you. Meeting closed. going to go on to the other